In this video, we're going to be talking about estimating probabilities empirically using simulation. So a simulation proves, or provides rather, a means of estimating probabilities when we are unable to determine them analytically, or it's really just impractical to estimate them empirically by observation. So first, you're going to design a method that uses a random mechanism, such as a random number generator or a table, uh, tossing a coin or a dice, something like that, to represent an observation. You want to be sure that the important characteristics of the actual process are preserved. Then you're going to generate an observation using the method in step one and determine if the outcome of interest has occurred. And then you're going to repeat the second step a large number of times. Then you're going to calculate the estimated probability by dividing the number of observations of the outcome of interest by the total number of observations generated. Let's do an example. Suppose that couples who wanted children were to continue having children until a boy was born. Would this change the proportion of boys in the population? So we're going to use a simulation to estimate the proportion of boys in the population if couples were to continue having children until a boy was born. So we'll use a single random digit to represent a child, where an odd digit will represent a male birth and an even digit will represent a female birth. We'll select random digits from a random digit table until a male is selected and we'll record the number of boys and girls. And we're going to repeat step two a large number of times. So here we have four rows from a random digit table at the back of a textbook. And if we look at our first trial, here we have a girl and then a boy. And then a boy, and then a girl and a boy, and a girl and a boy, and a boy, and a boy, and a boy, and a girl, a girl, and a boy, and then a girl and a boy, and then a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, and a boy. And here we have 10 trials. So you would continue this process a large number of times, at, at least 100 trials. Then you're going to calculate the proportion of boys out of the number of children born. So notice that here, with only 10 trials, the proportion of boys is 10 to 22, which is pretty close to 0 0.5. Let's look at another example. A man has five ties, and each day he chooses a tie at random to wear to work. He is colorblind, and his wife frequently complains that he wears the same tie two days in a row. Your task is to design and conduct a simulation that would be used to estimate the probability that he wears the same tie two or more days in a row in a five-day work week. So for part A, we're going to simulate the strategy of selecting a random assigned digits to the ties that will result in the probability of selection of each tie being equal. So we have digits 1 through 10 or 0 through 9, and we have 5 ties. So we can do something like this, where 0 and 1 are tie 1, 2 and 3 are tie 2, 4 and 5 for tie 3, 6 and 7 for tie 4, and then digits 8 and 9 for tie 5. So what could we do um, to describe, so part B, describe how you would use a random digit table to conduct one run of your simulation where one run consists of selecting ties on the five days in the work week. So you could start in the upper left corner of a random digit table, and you'd look at a set of five random digits. And each digit, you'd label each digit as tie one through five. And then you look to see if there were any two adjacent digits with the same tie. So if there are, then this represents a week where the man wears the tie the same tie two days in a row. So part C says using the following lines from a random number table, conduct five runs and estimate the probability that he wears the same tie two or more days in a row in a five day work week. So you need to mark on your digits to help you explain your procedure. Okay, you don't have to, but it's a good idea. Notice that in the first week, we have three, seven, seven, five, four. Well, digit 3 goes with tie 2, digit 7 goes with tie 4, digit 7 goes with tie 4, digit 5 goes with tie 3, and digit 4 goes with tie 3. So in the first week, he wears the same tie two days in a row. 
And that actually happens twice. Now on the second week, he uses ties 3, 2, 4, 3, and 5. And so he didn't wear the same tie two days in a row. On the third week, we have ties 5, 2, 3, 2, 5. Again, did not wear the same tie two days in a row. The fourth week, he also did not wear the same tie two days in a row. And in the fifth week, he did end up wearing the same tie two days in a row. So here we have a probability of him wearing the same tie two days in a row of 2 over 5. And so that's how you would do that. Now it only asks us to conduct five runs to estimate the probability, but in reality, you would want to go through a lot, like at least 100 runs, to really be able to estimate the probability that it wears the same tie two or more day days in a row in a five-day work week.